I think I'm being trolled. A couple of videos ago, I asked, what do you think about pushing snow across the road and into somebody else's yard? I just don't like that. Well, I come out this morning and what do I find? Snow pushed across the road and into my yard. <laughs> I might have to have a talk with that plow driver. Now, this is what I think of as a typical Michigan snowstorm. You know, it's not a mega snowstorm, but it's something that you would get every week or two, maybe a couple times a week even. We got six or seven inches on the ground. Who knows, maybe a couple more will fall, but plenty to plow. You gotta find some way to push it. I've got the pusher on the front, but I am gonna be using that MK inverted snowblower as much as possible today. So the great thing about a snowblower is it's not gonna leave a pile anywhere. However, a pile came in handy a couple days ago at the end of my driveway. I live right on a sharp turn here, and lo and behold, a car came a little too fast to the turn and landed up right into a pile of snow at the end of my driveway. It was the first chance I've had to tow anybody out with a new F-350, but maybe I do want to leave at least one pile there at the end of the driveway to avoid any damage in my yard. Hey, if you like what you see here, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you, and make sure you hit that subscribe button right underneath the video. And if you're looking for cool tractor stuff, read through that description right underneath the video, or head on over to goodworkstractors.com. You can get yourself a snow pusher, a snow blower, some wheel weights, or who knows what else you can find. Now let's get to it.
Okay, so one of the limitations I'm finding out of a three-point mounted snowblower, this probably doesn't apply to everybody, but it does on my driveway where I've got a big flat landing and then a pretty steep drop-off, is when you go over that drop-off, the snowblower wants to pick up off the ground. So I'm trying to kind of figure out the right way to tackle that with a three-point snowblower. Otherwise, I have a really high pile of snow right near the, the edge of that ridge where the snowblower is coming up off the ground. It doesn't want to make contact and pick up that snow. I may end up having just to push the snow over the ridge with the snow pusher and then blow the snow from that point on. Now the back drag on the snowblower itself will go below the bottom edge of the snowblower, so it'll actually hang down an extra few inches. I am going to try that as well, seeing if I can drop it down the whole way and scrape it along. We'll see what happens.
Sorry about that. Okay, so I was just thinking about it driving by, but this is a commercially snow plowed driveway right across the road right here. I thought it'd be a good comparison for folks when you're thinking about what kind of job does a commercial snow plow company do that you're paying to do versus what this snow blower can do. What are the kind of results that you should expect? You know, clearing it right down to the bare concrete or asphalt versus leaving a little skiff of snow. I'd say the results are pretty comparable. takes a bit to get used to it. It's not great having the shift yeah. and switch, but it's not the worst because you're typically doing it while you're not moving. Yeah. So you've just finished the thing, you're going to change, so I can use one hand to shift it there. It's still, if, I get, if I got this to muscle memory. It's still less efficient though. It's, it's, not, it's not great at all. This is where I prefer the forward back pedal. Yeah. Uh, on the tractor. It's like a hydrostatic tractor. But. I'm going to plow a little bit more because it's fun. Right. Man, I didn't realize how chilly it was. It's such a beautiful day out right now. Sun is shining. Just a small little breeze. It's a little chilly out here. I think it's, what is it, six degrees? I don't know. I might go back inside that cab. That feels pretty good in there. I think that snowblower did a pretty good job overall. So what do you think? Is this the ultimate snow removal setup right here? Blower on the back, pusher on the front. You can tackle pretty much whatever mother nature throws at you. Okay, so random thoughts. This is my second time using this inverted snow blower, and uh, I gotta say, I really do think this might be the ultimate setup. You know, Chris mentioned it too. You know, we did three out of these four driveways last time with the gator, with the snow plow, and it just knocked it out so much faster with the inverted snow blower. In fact, we didn't have to touch the pusher at all in any of these scenarios. I didn't drop it to the ground a single time for the four driveways that we did today. And it's not really about the width of the blade. On the Gator, it's a 72 inch wide blade, and this is a 78 inch snow blower, so it's really only six inches wider. You're not getting that much more clearance. There's always gonna be a bit of overlap involved as well to prevent spillage. With the back drag on the snow blower as well, you can get right up to a garage door and pull away. That really makes or minimizes the cleanup process with a shovel. However, if you take a look at a side load garage like what I have right here, you can only get so close to the garage door. So you're going to have 
I'm looking at probably a solid foot, maybe 18 inches of cleanup I'm gonna have to take care of after the fact. So that kind of ties into the mobility issue of the entire setup. You know, you can't get next to those garages sometimes. Over on the far side by the basketball hoop, I can't get as tight as I could with a pusher or a plow just because of the kind of the geometry of the whole situation, you know, depending on how you can back up and if you have to kind of turn, to, you know, on a big apron as it narrows, there's those kinds of considerations to take uh, into account. You know, this machine here is all of 20 feet long. It could be longer than that even. So it's a, a big piece of equipment. Of course, you don't have to have a setup on a four series tractor. They make these snow blowers all the way down to run on a little subcompact as well. Now, one of the other limitations or considerations at least is with every single one of these driveways, the first thing I had to think about was where was I gonna blow the snow? You know, in between here and my neighbor's driveway, it's a very thin strip and blowing it over there, it's easily gonna go into his driveway. Fortunately, I'm actually snow blowing his driveway too, so it's not that big of a deal. But even these spruce trees that are right here, I love my spruce trees. And when we went over to the other side to do his driveway, I noticed all the little branches and, and pieces of the tree that were laying on the snow. So I damaged those trees simply by blowing the snow into them. And up here, I had nowhere else to blow the snow. So if I was gonna blow it, that's the area I had to go to. So that's something you definitely wanna think about. However, if you're doing just one driveway over and over and not an entire neighborhood or doing it commercially, I'm sure you'll figure out a game plan to be successful. So everybody's perfect setup is different, but for me, I think this pretty much nails it. You know, I got the snowblower on the back, get right up to the garage door, tackle a lot of driveways really quickly, but over at my shop, I have nowhere to use a snowblower. I have to push snow. I got to push it up a hill. It's very challenging. Once it gets up there, I just stack it up in the kind of in the, the front apron, so nothing to worry about. So your mileage may vary, as they say, but for me, this is as good as it gets. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button right underneath the video. If you want to get a pusher or a snowblower or something else pretty cool for your tractor, then read through that description right underneath the video. All sorts of helpful links down there, or head on over to goodworkstractors.com. Thanks so much for stopping by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.